why drowning in the Waipu were attributed to the Tanifa of the Waipu Horofatu. In 1951, Ngāti Purau Pakiki asked Tohunga Hori Keti to bless the Waipu River in an effort to stop the deaths. Surviving eyewitnesses reported seeing the Tanifa Horofatu moving down the Waipu and at the conclusion of the Karakia out to sea. The, the strange thing was when we started to sprinkle the water, the cloud of dust fall about 100 yards downstream ahead of us. And as we sprinkled, that cloud, that, that dust cloud just moved slowly. It kept about the same distance away from us as we walked, worked our way down the river. Since being banished from the Waipu, Hurufatu has been laying in wait, drawing strength, gathering his forces, calling them to his side. He wants to return home. How? And what will this look like? Over the past six decades, Ngāti Purau Whenua has been on the move. Erosion is aiding Horofatu's reclaiming of his home, his birthright. Researchers report a combination of high rainfall, poor soil and rock type is causing a gradual shift of sediment from the Waipu's contributing streams rivers and high country. This sediment travels and settles at the Waipu mouth and along the east coast shoreline. In 2004, Jesse McNinch of the William and Mary Institute of Marine Science in Virginia measured the outflow of sediment and build up at 3 to 6 metres deep, with sediment spreading up to 30 kilometres out to sea. We're, we're the worst, if not the second worst in the whole world, for sediment pollution. There was a time when we, we were, were the worst. worst. <laughs> but now, the big, is it the Yellow River or the Yangtze? Yangtze. So the Yangtze <laughs> River in China, which is one of the biggest rivers in the world, now per cup of water has more sediment than Waiapu. But, but five years seven. ago, seven years ago, per cup of water, we had more sediment. While this may not seem like an immediate threat, a problem arises when we look another 100 kilometres beyond the Waipu mouth to the Hikurangi Trench. The little Waipu mouth is reported to host the largest slip in the southern hemisphere. What will happen when the tons of sediment slip into the Hikurangi Trench? A catalyst for disaster is the geologically unstable nature of the tectonic plates upon which Ngāti Purau rests. Much of the North Island sits on what is called the Australian Plate. Ngāti Puro East Coast is on the rim of this plate. The Pacific Plate is to the east and moving very slowly westward underneath Ngāti Puro. The movement of the Pacific Plate underneath the Australian Plate causes friction. The result? Earthquake. When this time comes, the Waipu Slip will undoubtedly collapse into the Hikurangi Trench. This would trigger a tsunami. Are we prepared for Horofatu's return? A strong earthquake thousands of kilometres away could trigger a distant tsunami, giving us hours of warning. A strong and prolonged local earthquake, like the one experienced on East Coast in December 2007, could trigger a tsunami within minutes. Gisborne District Council's immediate plan of action is to increase tsunami awareness and education by posting tsunami warnings along the east coast from Lottom Point to Muriwai. Is this enough? Ngāti Puro is currently in a state of denial. Local solutions for the erosion issue are necessary. We need to act now. Horofatu left as a raging cloud of dust. His return will be marked by a devastating force, a wave, tsunami. Horofatu is hungry, restless and seeks revenge. His army awaits his orders. Can we keep Horofatu at bay?